Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. So I told my wife, I'm not preaching today. Worship team, y'all, y'all sang, y'all sang, y'all sounded, uh, y'all sounded just as good as the worship team when they just let y'all sing. It was really good, really good. It's touching to me when you hear the sheep sing to the God that made all of us. It's nothing like that. Michael B., right here. I want to take some time before we start to uh, honor our educators. Literally, if you work with students, kids, in any capacity, we want to honor you. If you are a teacher, a principal, an assistant principal, any type of administrator, social worker, counselor, uh, janitor, uh, whatever, school bus driver, uh, we want to honor you. If you don't mind, could you go ahead and stand up? Not all at once. Stay standing. We can do better than that. And I just want to say, you get a car. We don't have a car for you. You can go ahead and stay standing because we're going to pray for y'all. I'm going to be up here two hours, so I know you can stand for a few minutes. We do want to honor you. Um, I, I was thinking about it. I'm a sports fanatic. Um, I love LeBron James and, and, and Morant from Memphis and Tom Brady. And I love sports. I love entertainment. Um, secret ambition of mine is I, I would love to be a rapper. <laughs> I would. I ain't going to lie, man. Uh, I would love that. Uh, think of that, man. We, we really love entertainers and athletes. We laud them. We herald them. And teachers and educators, uh, we don't do that enough for you all. We really don't. Uh, and so we want you to know we see you. We're grateful for you. And more importantly than that, God sees you. I firmly believe every now and then I envy what you all do because you get to be out on the battlefield. And if, I, if I'm going to keep it real, y'all are really on the battlefield now. You don't know when you go out to school if you're coming home now. And you all are aware of that, yet you're going tomorrow to pour into our kids. We salute you. We're grateful for you. We don't have cars for you, but uh, we stopped by Gucci. <laughs> and we got you these T-shirts that simply say, stay salty. We are a church, so y'all understand that this is scriptural. My neighborhood I grew up in, you didn't want to be salty. But, but this is a good thing. So after church, go out here and you can get your T-shirt. Uh, give them your size and they will have your T-shirt for you. Again, we thank you. If you don't mind, let me uh, pray for you. Can you keep this one for me? Let's pray. Father, you're amazing. I am certainly not you. I'm a shepherd here. I'm a shepherd here. But as a shepherd here, I was touched to hear us sing to you. Who better to sing to? Who better to put our teachers, educators, in your hands. We put them in your hands. We put them in your hands. Even the students, we put them in your hands. And somewhere I, I, I understand that you're a bulwark, you're a fortress. So what we ask is for you to protect them. We ask for you to be a, a hedge of protection around every educator. Anybody that 
comes into contact with the students in any way, shape, or form, or capacity, would you not only be their hedge, but would you anoint them? And would you help them to want that? Would you help them to see what they do uh, as a ministry? Would you give them a good year? Would you keep them out of harm's way? No bullets, no guns, no shootings. We love you. We thank you for the educators. Would you hear our prayer? Now, as I get ready to open your word, would you um, some way, somehow use me who I understand that I'm not up here because I'm worthy or smart. <laughs> I'm up here because of your grace. So if you knew enough to call me out of darkness when I wasn't worthy, I feel like you can use me today. I want I want to decrease. I beg you to increase. Holy Spirit, please do what I can't do. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Daniel chapter 1. Daniel chapter 1. I want to say to the educators, I am asking you today and for the remainder of the school year to help me preach this message. Rashid, you have a beautiful family. Look like their mama. <laughs> Sorry. Educators, I need you to help me preach this message throughout the school year because we want our students to be encouraged, to be witnesses to other students and even to educators. And so from Daniel chapter 1, I want you to help me basically say what this chapter is saying. Here's the message that we want to give our students. You may be young but you're ready. You may be young, but you're ready. So if you have a student in the room that's in the vicinity of you, why don't you look at them? And I don't want you to say it. I want you to sing it. Say, you may be young, but you're ready. <laughs> okay, I knew the 11 o'clock, the 9 o'clock was quiet. Uh, look at them again and say, you may be young, but you're ready, but you're ready. And parents, parents, listen to me. You got to believe that. You got to believe, man, I, I was a youth pastor in Chicago. Here's what I quickly noticed. I hate the saying, the children are our future. What? The drug dealers in Chicago were not waiting for the future. They were getting kids where they were, training them to sell drugs big time. Nah, y'all ain't the future. We need y'all to be now. Uh, the world, have y'all seen the world that these kids live in? We need them to be preaching now. We need them to be ministers now. We need them to be evangelizing right now. I'm talking about y'all's kids. Don't, don't, don't think it's got to be me. We need people standing at the bus stop rather than sucking on a lollipop giving the gospel. So I'm going to say it again. You may be young, but you're ready. For those of us that are older, why don't you pat yourself and talk to yourself? Because I'm young. I don't know about y'all. I'm young. Birthday September 23rd, but I am young. You may be young, but you're ready. In Daniel chapter 1, uh, there, there, there are some men in the text, young men who, uh, they live in Judah. The problem is Judah has been besieged. The enemy, the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, besieges Judah. In other words, he got his troops to surround the city. You know what I mean? Uh, punking them. Uh, you know what I mean? Bullying them, surrounding them, and eventually, you know what I mean? Snatched them. Yeah. 
That's bad when somebody come to your crib, snatch you, deport you to their land, and make you captive, and ain't really nothing you can do about it. That's what happens in the text. We see four young men that are living in what? Captivity. They're living in captivity. But what blesses me, and I'm talking to young people, in the midst of captivity, they possess integrity. And and I'm talking to some older people now. You got a job, you feel like you're captive there. In the midst of that job, you can work with integrity. In the midst of that marriage that you want to get out, you 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 can have integrity in your marriage. You can be faithful to your spouse. You ain't loved them in a while. You can change. That hit a nerve. Not only do they have integrity, these dudes succeed. (laughs) Uh, I thought I told you we don't stop. (laughs) Ain't nothing you can do to stop if God has something for you. I don't care if you are in Babylon. These dudes succeed. Guess where they succeed, James? In Babylon. And verse 4 And verse 17 tells me they're young men. A lot of experts think they're teenagers. They're teenagers. So can I say it one more time? You may be young, but you're ready. But you're ready. Number one, even when things are out of your hands. Eve, I like when when I hear you. Where are you at? I love you. See, I love when people get it, man. You are, I ain't even got to preach to you. You preaching to yourself. The word is that good. You may be young, but you're ready even when things are out of your hands. If you live this life long enough, some things are going to be out of your hands. There's going to be some things in life, listen to me, you ain't going to be able to do anything about. I thought about it sitting there because I love to praise and worship. I pray and read all the time. It's rarely a day go by that ain't in the Word. Many days I read, many days I pray, and many days I get up, and can I be honest, ain't nothing changed. Still hard. Still got haters. Still got bills to pay. Still, but, 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 but here's the thing, some of that stuff just out of my hands. I, 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 I ain't God. Y'all see how my hands ain't big enough to hold y'all's problems. My hands ain't big enough to fix my own problems. Some things in life, students, are going to be out of your hands. That's what these young men were facing. It was out of their hands. Look at verse 1. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. Uh, and, and, And this part will make you scratch your head. And the Lord gave. Well, what does the Lord give? Certainly, blessing. That's what the TV preacher told me. The Lord gave blessing. The Lord gave increase. No, is that what your Bible says? The Lord gave Jehoiakim. Hold on, that's your king, the king of your people. Gave him, the king of Judah, into whose hand? Nebuchadnezzar. Who's Nebuchadnezzar? He's an evil king. He's a pagan king. So, Lord, you behind this? I like the real Bible. That they ain't playing. God ain't magic in here. God put you in some of the stuff you in. Stop giving the devil credit. God wanted glory from you. You wouldn't give him glory. So God was like, I'm going to get my glory. Now, if I got to shake your behind up, I'm going to get my glory. Some of y'all ain't, you don't praise God till he put your butt in Babylon. What I love about God, he ain't scared. He'll put you in Babylon. He know he worthy of glory. He know you ain't praised him in a straight month. It's been 30 days since you lifted your hands. Come with me to Babylon. In Babylon, it's hot over there. You'll lift your hands. But can I give you some advice? Do it before Babylon. Do it in them soft seats you sitting in. So how dare you come here and don't worship? The Lord gave 
Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with some of the articles of the house of God. In other words, here's what I like too. We love buildings too much. This God's house, God, let, 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 let even the stuff in my house go because I'm more than that church. I'm more than a synagogue. I'm more than four walls. Take it. <laughs> Y'all do know if this church burned down, we'd still be the church. <laughs> which he carried into the land of Shinar, the house of his little G God. Ah, we just getting started. But y'all see what I see? It seems like the enemy is winning. Seems like he's winning. And he brought the articles into the treasure house of his little G God. Then the little K king instructed Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, to bring some of the children of Israel and some of the king's descendants and some of the nobles. We just getting started. But y'all see what I see? These four dudes, we ain't, we ain't got to their names yet. Uh, um, but it's Daniel, it's, uh, it's Hananiah, it's Mishael, and, and it's Azariah. We know them because we can't pronounce them as Shadrach, Meshach, and a bad, a bad. <laughs> uh, he was a bad. <laughs> You can say it. I mean, I can say it. You can't say it. <laughs> Here's what I already see. We're only, only three verses in. These young men experienced invasion. Think about that. If your country, your town, if Woodstock, if Marietta was invaded, they, inspir they experienced invasion, and it was out of their hands. They, they experience deportation. They're marched off to a strange land, man, and it's out of their hands. They're captives. Nothing they can do about it because it's out of their hands. They're exiled, and it's all out of their hand. And then on top of that, y'all see, I got it highlighted. My Bible says the Lord gave. The Lord gave, and, 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 and you got to understand sovereignty. Just because it's out of your hands don't mean that it didn't pass through his. I don't care what happens to you. Even the bad things that you go to, God might not have done it, but he had at least allowed it. But here's what I told my wife. If God's sovereignty allows it, God's prov providence can protect you in the midst of it. So, so God gave them. God gave them. Well, why did God give them? Because they had a jacked up king. Jehoiakim, who should have known better, this dude had contempt for God's word. He hated God's word. One time Jeremiah was prophesying to him, he tore up the prophecy. He hated the word of God. One time he killed the prophet by the name of Uriah. He hated God's word. He had contempt for God. He hated God's prophet. So God's like, I right. And then on top of that, they're besieged by an evil king by the name of Nebuchadnezzar. They're exiled to where? Shinar. Where is that? Babylonia. In other words, Babylon. Here's what I know about Babylon. Tyranny. Here's what I know about Babylon. Idolatry. And listen to me. It's all out of these dudes' hand. It's out of their control. We can't tell them to pick themselves up by their bootstraps. It's out of their control. <laughs> Can I ask a question? Anybody in this room ever have to live through some stuff that you didn't create? You didn't create it. It's out of your hands. But you got to live through it. You didn't create that dysfunctional department at work. You just got hired during the pandemic. <laughs> but, but man, you, you sit on a floor. You didn't create it, and, and you can feel it. You, you ever worked on those jobs? You can feel the hatred. Have you ever worked with people that talk about each other, and then they go to lunch and smile like that? Have yeah. anybody ever been in an environment you didn't create? It was out of your hands, but you had to live in it. You had to be there. Yeah. You didn't, you didn't create it. 
you didn't ask your mama and your daddy to get together and, you know, do what they did. They got together and then you came. You didn't ask to be born. And now you got to live in their stuff at the house. You, you waking up, you waking up to arguments. You didn't create this. You going to bed to arguments. And then, and then you come into church and you watching them same folks just cussing each other out. They got their hands lifted. <laughs> you didn't create it. You didn't create them hypocrites. Let me move on. Uh, here, 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 here's what I want to say to you, even though you didn't create it. You got to have this mindset that these guys had. Here's their mindset. My environment won't be my excuse. My environment won't be my excuse. Keith, they're trying to change my language. <laughs> Uh, 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 no, no, don't worry about it. They're trying to look. Look at verse 4. It says, young men in whom there was no blemish, they were good looking, gifted in all wisdom, possessing knowledge and quick to understand, who had ability to serve in the king's palace and whom they might do what? Teach their language. They're trying to change your language and, and literature of the Chaldeans. They're trying, here's what they're trying to do. They're trying to change your worldview. And, and, and some of us need a worldview. You need to clearly define what your worldview is. Let me say it this way. What do you believe? Yeah, I'm glad to see y'all in church, but what do you believe? Not what mama and them believe, not what grandmama and them believe. What do you believe? Man, if you go to school today, you need to know what you believe. I don't believe that was a big bang. Verse 5, and the king appointed for them a daily provision of the king's delicacies. Think about that. Don't read this too fast. When the king set out his delicacies, oh, man, rib tips, <laughs> steak tips, beef tips, tri-tips, quadruple tips, all the king's delicacies. You know how good this food had to be? He wasn't shopping at all this. <laughs> Whole foods, sprouts. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then he set out his wine which he drank do you think the king was sitting out pink champagne do you think it's real talk he, do you know how good this wine had to be <laughs> when, the, when, the last, when the last time you had some wine look at <laughs> I see that hand and three years Three years of training for them so that the end of that time they might serve before the king. Now from among those of the sons of Judah were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. To them the chief of the eunuchs. Listen to this. He gave them names. Here's the problem. I already got a name. My mama already gave me a name. How are you going to change my name from Shaquan to Biff? Y'all feel me? Y'all feel me? How in the world? I've been, I've been Tyrone all my life. Now you want me to be Biff? <laughs> you got to see what the king is trying to do. Don't change my name. He changes their names. He gave Daniel the name. And listen to what he changed his name to. Belteshazzar. Ah, and to Hananiah, Shadrach, to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. They are trying to do what? Groom you. They're trying to indoctrinate you. And listen to me, it's out of your hands. It's all out of your hands. They're trying to change your name. They didn't try. They actually change your name. But on top of that, they change your name to reflect their pagan gods. Y'all do know that Daniel literally means God, capital G, is my judge. That's a good thing. But they changed his name to Belteshazzar, which means Bell protect him. How many of you know Bell can't protect nobody? But they're changing your literal worldview. They don't want you to be monotheistic anymore, but you can believe in a bunch of God.
they want you to lose your identity. They, they want you to be who they want you to be. <laughs> they want you to forget who you are. I'm talking to y'all students, college students. They want you to forget who you are, but more importantly, they want you to forget whose you are. And I'm talking to some older people today. When is the last time you sat back and reflected on whose you are? Can I say that again? Whose you are? Whose you are? Man, I can tell y'all don't feel me now because if you just reflected on whose you are, you wouldn't be able to help but lift your hands. If you just reflected on the fact that you belong to the King of Kings, you actually are possessed by the Lord of Lords. The stress and the weight that you feel on your shoulders, it will go away. When is the last time you took 10 seconds? Can I give you 10 seconds just to reflect on whose you are? Just 10 seconds. Whose you are? 10 seconds. Don't let your environment be your excuse. They're trying to change your language, but these men have an attitude, I can't escape, but I can elevate. They can change my literature. They can change what I read, even in the schools. It used to be that we were about absolute truth. Now we're about relative truth. You can change what I read, but in the midst of it, I can't escape, but I can at least elevate. You can talk to me and try to change my name but you can't change what's in my heart. Don't let your environment be your excuse. You got to say, hey, it's bad, but I ain't bad. It's bad around me, but it's not bad inside of me. You got to say that sometimes you got to talk that stuff out loud. Why is it not bad inside of me? Because greater. Okay. How do I know it ain't bad inside of me? Because greater. Some of y'all know the Bible. Greater. It ain't bad inside of me. Yep. I can't pay my bills, but, but inside of me, I got greater going on. I don't like what the doctor told me, but inside of me, I got greater. Greater is he who's in me. Even in Babylon. Even in a... Uh, projects building, even in a high rise on the south side of Chicago, even in Bankhead, even in Buckhead. He's greater. So don't let your environment be your excuse. Matter of fact, maybe you there because he's trying to grow you because he don't want you to be shallow. Uh, You can't give your kids everything at at one time. You got to grow them. They got to grow. They got to grow into it. Why would God just pour certain things on us when we ain't ready? You need that environment. Can I say that again? You need that environment. You need, these guys succeeded where? In Babylon. Adults, when I see commotion and stuff, I get concerned, folks shooting today. You good? Let me see your hands. Okay. (laughs) Adults, let me ask you a question. Because they're in Shinar, they're in Babylon. That's not good. Adults, can I give you a question? Do you ever consider your posterity? Do you ever consider that you could be passing Babylon to your babies? (laughs) I didn't want to make it real in the first service. I got to. So dudes, dudes, when you're at the computer, man, getting more and more addicted. Could it be that, man, that that, that you can pass some of that stuff to your kid? Man, I I heard a man on Christian TV one time said he was watching porn, 
And he looked around, his kid was behind him. Little kid had gotten out of the bed in the middle of the night. You ever think about, we give our kids some of the Babylon? It's all in their hands. Man, I, I'm 50, almost 53 years old. When I was growing up, I lived in a culture, I'm not here to judge anybody, a culture of marriage. People were married, man, all in my neighborhood. We were all, didn't have money, but we had marriages. We have literally handed our kids a culture of divorce. Do y'all hear me? I'm not here to judge you, man. I'm glad you're here. That's the culture they know. You ain't gonna like what I'm about to say now, but man, we've handed our kids a culture. I love you if you're here. We've handed them a culture where they think it's okay for two men to marry. I know it's quiet. And listen to me, if you're gay, I love you. One of the problems is the church hadn't loved gay people. But man, God, I read it this week, he's clear on marriage. He is. And I can't hand you something just so you can like me. I don't want to, I don't want to give anybody Babylon. It's out of their hand. It's out of our kids. Adults, it's time for us to be adults. It's out of their hands. It's out of their hands. It's time for us, listen to me. If we're the only person in the room standing on truth, stand there. Stand there. Stand there. Stand there. If people leave the church today, I'm still going to stand. I'm still going to stand. I'm still going to stand. I cannot hand any of y'all Babylon. Babylon is nowhere you want to be. You may be young, but you're ready. Number one, even when it's out of your hands. Number two, because of what's in your heart. I'm way behind. Because of what's in your heart. Uh, because of what's in your heart, because of what's in your heart. Uh, I've read seven verses. Has it, ha- hadn't it been bad so far? These dudes, uh, 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 their land's been besieged. Uh, they came in, punked them, took them out, <laughs> just punked them, took them to Babylon. Uh, they've invaded their place. They're exiles. They're captives. My favorite word is next. Y'all read verse 8. It said, but. <laughs> but, oh man, y'all look so cool. But, 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 shack, shack, shack. I like biblical butts and I cannot lie. <laughs> Ain't nothing like a biblical butt. <laughs> I like them. Because I've read seven verses that have not been good. Verse 8 says, but, but, <laughs> but I, I remember in, in Saturday morning's conjunction, junction, was your huh? Yeah, yeah, I know already this text about to change. We, you can close your Bibles if you want. I'm telling you, they lived happily ever after. But you know what I like? It doesn't just say, but it said, but Daniel. (laughs) Y'all missing it. I already told you Daniel was young. Chances are good. He was a teenager. So in other words, God uses a young person. Somebody say to to turn that thing. Uh, God used a young person to turn that thing. I said this at the first service. A part of our problem is parents. Blake, come here. I know know we didn't plan this. Come here, come here. Oh, I got shorts on. Didn't wear long pants. All right, I'm glad you're here, though. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. A part of our problem, a part of our problem is we don't think our kids are behind the bus. Y'all missed it. Y'all already missed it. Okay, stay right there. I I, I believe in this dude. I don't care. I don't care if you see him out doing something crazy. I believe in him. But Daniel, and our problem is we don't think our kids can make the change. We don't think our kids can be uh, 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 Hananiah and Azariah and Michelle. I'm here to say, but Blake. 
I'll say it again. But Blake, but Blake, uh, things were bad, but Blake had God's hand on him. You got to say that about your own kids. I dare 10 of y'all, thank you, son. I love you, boy. Ah, put some long pants on next week. Ah, want to do it? You got to say, but I dare you to put your kid's name in here. This text is about to change. Daniel is about to change the text. Y'all don't hear me. Daniel, Daniel ain't in grad school. Daniel ain't at Harvard. No, God is with him. And because God is with him, he can be young and he can shift the atmosphere. Do y'all hear me? Your kid, your kid can shift the atmosphere. Your kid, Emily can shift the atmosphere. Atmosphere. Your kid, Dawn, can she can shift, uh, or Mariah can shift the atmosphere. Y'all's kids, why can't they be Daniel? Yeah. 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 And I, 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 I mean it about Blake. I believe in you. Yes. Why? I know God. Yeah. I know you know him. Yeah. I believe in y'all. I've known y'all for some years. I believe in y'all. Why can't it be y'all? Yeah. Yeah, you play good uh, volleyball, but, but what if God has even more than that for you? I think he does. Don't let anybody look down on you because you young. They mad because they didn't do it. Man, we need to have our kids standing at the bus stop with the gospel on their lips. <laughs> you may be young, but you're ready because of what's in your heart. Now, my Bible says, but Daniel did what? Purposed in his heart <laughs> that he would not defile himself with the. I, I got to say this ain't nobody doing that today. We dirty. He said, I ain't going to get dirty. Man, we dirty. Some of us been watching stuff. I'm talking adults that got us dirty. We watch stuff. It don't even bother us that God don't like. I'm watching it. He don't even like it. I'm listening to it. He don't even like it. I'm listening to this beat, but oh, snap, I'm dirty. I'm getting dirty. I'm starting to stank, and God is holy, and I'm in front of a holy God stank, and it don't even bother me. Wow. 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 But Daniel purposed in his heart, that ain't going to be me, that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacy. Daniel knew the Mosaic law. We ain't supposed to eat anything to uh, sacrifice to, to false gods. So Daniel is basically saying, I'm not eating what I even think might have been offered to idols. I don't know, but I ain't going to take the chance. God going to have to feed me. <laughs> uh, I, I, nor with the wine which he drank. King, I don't want your wine. Therefore, he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into the favor and goodwill of the chief of the eunuchs. And the chief of the eunuchs said to Daniel, yo, man, I get that you want to eat some vegetables, some string beans, some collars and stuff, and drink some to Sunny. But look, if I, don't, if I don't give you what the king gave you, you know, man, it's, it, I might die. Yeah. Yeah. It's bad to be scared of the wrong king. That's another sermon. A lot of us scared of the wrong king. Uh, uh, uh. He says, so why should he see your faces looking worse than the young men who are your age? Then you would endanger my head before the little K king. What's happened in this text so far? The king is like, I want, I want the smartest. I want the best. I want the brightest. I want the best looking. I want the cream of the crop. That's how Babylon rolled. When they would take over you, they would get your best and build in, in their own country. So here's the good news. The king thinks high of you, yeah. highly of you. But he a devil. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> 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 <Yep>. <laughs> Daniel and the other young man could have said, oh, snap, the king wants me. I'm flattered. I'm honored. The king chose me. That must be God. Yeah, the king thinks I'm good enough. The king thinks I'm good looking enough, gifted enough, smart enough. Instead, Daniel's heart was this. I'm going to serve capital K king, and I'm not succumbing to little K king. 
Don't let your abilities and your capabilities be more prevalent than your integrity. They know you by your accolades at work. They know your skills. But where your integrity at? Uh, uh, uh. Let me say to the young people, students, don't have stylish clothes, but have no integrity. Nobody likes Air Jordans like me, but don't have the flyest kicks, but have no integrity. No, 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 no. You got to be better than that. Uh, You look good, but what's in your heart? The king's delicacies, delicacies, that's not what was in Daniel's heart. The king's wine, uh, that was not in Daniel's heart. Daniel was like, you can change my language, you can change my literature, you can even change my name, but you can't change what's in my heart. (laughs) The Bible said he purposed in his heart. Y'all don't know when to shout. He's young. He purposed in his heart. In other words, it's not an accident. I'm making a conscious decision. I ain't stumbling into this. I ain't going into this blindfolded. If I get killed, I know what I'm doing. If I get beat, I know what I'm doing. If I get punished, I know what I'm doing. And he, he had a made-up mind. He had a heart that was fixed and a mind that was made up. And adults, we got to start modeling that for our kids. We drift too much. We drift in everything. You're fortunate because you got a good job, and you just drifted into it, man. You, you didn't go into it with the conscience. You just kind of got it. You just went online and filled out something. God was good. But what if you had been purposeful? You would have a job maybe that you're fulfilled in. Amen. Start doing some things with your conscious heart. Look at your name and say, stop drifting. Are y'all Okay. I'm purposing in my heart. I smell that steak the king cooking. <laughs> I smell them bottles of wine, but I'm purposing in my heart. I'm a captive. It ain't been good. I could justify drinking a couple glasses of wine. I need a little bit of wine anyway. It's stressful over here in Babylon. <laughs> Besides, God did this to us. The Bible says it. So I can justify. He ain't been good to me. I'm going to eat what I want to eat. Can we agree these boys' hands are tied? But but, but here's what I want to give you. Live in such a way that even when your hands are tied, your heart is free. My brothers may be watching online. Man, yesterday, you know where I was at? My hometown. You know why? My daddy is in the hospital, 98 years old. They think maybe he had a stroke. Uh, We don't know yet. But here's my point. I ain't looking for sympathy. The nurse told my brother, best patient we ever had. (laughs) Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. They think he might have had a stroke. He he said he's singing to us. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all are so cute. He's singing us the nicest patient we ever had. His hands are tied. He in the bed. We can't see him because he's tested positive for COVID. Can't have guests till Friday. But he ain't in there complaining. It's good when your hands are tied, but your heart, your heart is free. Your heart is free. See, see you, 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 you know people whose heart is free uh, because they say no to things that might be good to them but not, might not be good for them. That's when you got a free heart. You may be young, but you're ready because of what God has put in your heart. I got to hurry. Number three, you may be young. This is my favorite point. So when I say I got to hurry, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> You may, because this is my favorite point, because the church needs this one. If you don't get any other points, I'm talking to church people now, not so much to the students. You may be young, but you're ready, number three, to utilize your 
head. Can I say that again? Y'all are quiet. You may be young, but you're ready to utilize your head. When I first got saved, I said to some friends that had been saved a long time, because I was just looking, why is it that church people are so dumb? Man, I, I just saw it. I, you remember Jesse the Body of Ventura? He was the governor of Minnesota. He got in trouble one time for saying Christians were just robots. They just followed. I and mean, everybody was mad. I was like, he got a point. We don't think. We just do what some dudes say. We ain't looking at his life. He just can preach well. He just throw down when he up there preaching. We ain't looking at his life at all. And we following him. He ain't living nothing. He preaching. But we ain't smart enough to see when you walked in, he had diamond encrusted gold glasses. You ain't see that? <laughs> you ain't see them? His shoes could walk on their own because they straight up alligators. You didn't see it? You didn't see it? You didn't see that he was about your money? You ain't smart enough to see that? On stages like this, it's some straight up jokers. You got to be smart enough to at least see it. Why ain't Christians smarter? Y'all read Daniel? Dude was smart. Dude start thinking. He gets in a bind. What am I do? I ain't gonna panic. I'm gonna start thinking. I'm gonna think my way out of this. I love prayer. I love worship. But sometimes, huh, gotta stop praying. Start thinking. <laughs> I know. I know. I know you ain't gonna like it. Think. Use your think. Think about what you're trying to do. To <laughs> think. Christians, I'm talking to us. We shouldn't be the dummies at work. Ah, these boys are enduring hell on earth. Write it down. Let what you're enduring cause you to use your mind rather than lose your mind. It's the rest of the verses, verse 11. So Daniel said to the steward whom the chief of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, please test your servants for 10 days. Dude got a plan already. Already got a plan. Uh, uh, test us for 10 days and let them give us vegetables. Just give me some green beans, uh, collard greens. Uh, keep the fat back out of my greens. I don't want the fat back. Uh, give me a bottle of the sunny water. What is he doing? He's using his head. He's coming up on the spot with the plan. Christian, Christ follower, God follower, think and go figure. Then, then let our appearance be examined before you and the appearance of the young men who eat the portion of the king's delicacies. And as you see fit, so deal with your servant. He is doing what? Using his head. He's coming up with the plan. And if you see what I see, pretty cocky, ain't it? He said, we're going to be finer than them when this thing over. I'm all, y'all think of Daniel was like, I'm already fine. That's how I got here. But when I eat these here green beans and drink this here water, my pimple's going to be gone. <laughs> Bible. Verse 14, so he consented with them. And by the way, uh, you working for evil people? Stop arguing. Be smart enough to reason. He got favor with this dude. We want to talk about people that disagree with us. You've got to learn to be smart enough sometimes just to shut up. <laughs> because look at what this dude does. This dude ain't, this dude is one of them Babylonian knights. <laughs> Oh, different. <laughs> this dude consented with them. Had you been acting like a uh, jack of all trades, you wouldn't have gotten this. And he tested them 10 days, and at the end of 10 days, their features appeared better and fatter in flesh than all the young men who ate the portion of the king's delicacies. Thus the steward took away their portion of delicacies and the wine that they were to drink and gave them vegetables. If you follow Daniel, he prays. Remember, he gets in trouble for praying at the window. In this text, I don't see him pray. I just see him being smart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so let me say this to you. My favorite point, the church needs to get this. You can be saved and smart. Y'all, I'm, I'm going to stay there. 
because I've been in church my whole life, seeing some of the dumbest things ever from church people. Let me say, it's time out for that. Time for us to be smarter. You can be both. I'm talking to young people. You can be saved and smart. You can excel, get straight A's, read nay literature. You can still excel. You can be saved and smart. What did Daniel do? He purposed in his heart. But what else did he do? He had a heart that was purposed and a head that planned. He did them both. Daniel, what does he do in these verses? Here is what he does. He offers an option. He ain't just standing up defiant. That's smart. Hey, I don't want to eat what you eat, but let me offer you an option. Young people, that's what you got to do, man. When y'all go off to college, offer some options. What are options that you can offer? Because they're going to want you to smoke it and drink it to get high. Give them an offer, an, an option. Offer that I don't want to drink and smoke to get high, but let me offer you my option, the Holy Spirit. If it can't get me higher than the Holy Spirit, I don't want it anyway. Offer options. Instead of illicit sex, people are going to come to you offering illicit sex. I get it. I've been young before. Illicit sex. But instead of taking that, offer them, I don't want your illicit sex. But can I give you the lover of my soul? Somebody who loves me, right? Can I give you somebody who won't break up with you, who won't cheat on you, who won't two-time on you? Can I give you that? Offer options. Instead of the Big Bang Theory, tell them about the Big Bang Jesus made when he came in your life. Yeah. Options. But you got to be able to think. You may be young, but you're ready uh, to utilize your head. And finally, you may be young, but you're ready because of who is your help. Yes. I don't know if you noticed this. Uh, I just capitalize everything in help because I wanted y'all to get who I was. Y'all know who I'm talking about? Yes, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so we're going to be okay because of who our help is. Look at who their help is. Verse 17, as for these four young men, who gave? God. God is their help. This ain't rocket science, is it? God gave them knowledge and skill in all literature and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days when the king had said that they should be brought in, the chief of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. Then the king interviewed them, and among them all, none, none, none was found like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore, they served where? before the king without compromising. You can serve before the king without serving like the king. It, you, you can really do that. You can be in a secular environment and not let secular get on you. They're serving before the king and they don't look anything like the king. <laughs> Verse 20, and in all matters, did y'all hear that? In all matters of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined them, he found them not one, not four, not six, not seven, ten times better. They were way better than everybody else. They were the creme de la creme. They were the cream of the crop. And I got to say this, I believe students, you are too. I believe you're the cream of the crop. But Keith, I only had a couple of people in my family even go to college. Yeah, yeah, but you got help. You, you got God now. And so, and so we ain't talking about your family history. You can be the cream of the crop. But Keith, they've labeled me. I'm ADHD. I'm ADD. I'm BBD. I'm, I'm all of this stuff. Yeah, but you got help. You, do y'all hear me? You got God. You don't have to answer to those labels. Right. That's right. That's right. Where are they? In Shinar, in, Sh in Babylon. And that tells me, write it down, I'm almost done. Our provider is always greater than our predicament. Right. Always. Amen. Always. God gave them the birth. The Bible says he gave them knowledge. God gave them skill. God gave them wisdom. He, he allowed Daniel to be able to interpret dreams and vision. Where does this happen? In Babylon, in a place of tyranny, in a place of idolatry, in a place of paganism, in a place filled with 
false deities, a place that is anything but their comfort zone, their provider stepped in and made a way out of absolutely no way. So your help can provide for you. In the midst of your first year of college, when you find yourself struggling, your help can show up and help you. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you're depressed, when you're feeling lonely because you're away at school and, 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 and you don't even want to hang on, he can show up and help you. When you're overcome by your academic load, you have help. You guys have truly been lovely. Keep sweat. <laughs> I like that y'all sat on this roll because you know all my references. Speaking of Keith Sweat, you remember uh, when the Keith Sweat, his first, I won't say album, cassette? <laughs> you remember when it came out? Changed my neighborhood. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just, um, Keith, nobody, he couldn't, he sang weird, but you hadn't heard anything like it. New Jack R&B. Keith Sweat. And Beyonce, so you may be young, but you're ready. Beyonce came and sold more albums. She said she, she speeded it up. You may be young, but you're ready. You may be young, but you're ready. I get the feeling, though, I'm going to guess. Old boy Keith Sweat and old girl Beyonce I ain't talking about what I'm talking about. I'm going to guess. Let me clarify what I'm talking about in case you think I'm talking about what they're talking about. You may be young, but you're ready to serve the Lord. Amen. Daniel did it. Why can't you? Azariah did it. Why, why can't you? Why can't you? Hananiah. Hananiah served the Lord. Surely you can. And I'm talking to older people too. Why, why can't you? You're young. You're young. But you can set the tone. You don't have to follow the culture. You can create the culture. You're young, but you ain't no dog. You don't have to give in to your urges. Dogs can't control their urges. You don't have to live like a dog. I know the world, you can't watch anything now that's not sexualized. You can watch nothing. You can't watch a game and not see sex in the game. Me too ain't stop none of that but you don't have to live like a dog in heat because you're not a dog. You were literally knit together in your mother's womb. You want to know who knit you? God. Sometimes I don't think y'all hear me. Y'all realize how special we are that God put you together. God, I'm, I'm saying this to the adults too because some of us buy into the lie. If God took the time to stitch you together, don't you know he did it right? I'm talking about you. You ought to hit yourself and say, I'm done right. I'm done right. I don't care what people have said about me. I'm done right. You may be young, but guess what? You don't have to have nights where you get high only to wake up to mornings where you feel low. You don't. You're young, but you're ready. We need some crazy young people. If you go study history, typically it was young people that changed things. Stop waiting on us. Stop waiting. Man, y'all know how bad my hips and my knees and all of that stuff. You can't be waiting on me. I'm serious. You cannot wait on. You do it, young people. Right. 
So let me give you a homework assignment. This is for the adults as well. What problematic situations might await you this school year? Answer this question, how can you stand out in the midst of them? Anybody want to stand out? Here's how. Give your life to Jesus. I say it every week. (laughs) Give your life to Jesus for salvation. Let him free you. You're not free yet. How, how do you expect to be productive when you ain't even free? Give your life to Jesus for salvation. Number two, for sanctification. Let him set you apart. Let it, let it be clear that everybody can see you're different. For salvation, for sanctification. And number three, for service. Serve him. Serve him. Can I be frank? I'm thinking I could make a lot more money doing something else. I'm thinking I can. I talk to friends. Sometimes one friend told me about a bonus check he got. His bonus check was more than, than, more than what I made. He balling, nice swimming pool in the back, house looks like a hotel. And I love him. He loves God. But for me, I just want to serve God. Whatever my paycheck looks like, it looks like. I want to serve God. I can, I can only speak for me. I can only speak for me. Nothing better. The first service, an educator. I don't think she comes here every week. Very uh, uh, classy looking lady, educator. When I gave the altar call, she came down and gave her life to the Lord. (laughs) Her skin didn't look like mine. She was lighter hued than I, but I was like, that's why I serve him. My mama would say serving the Lord would pay off after a while. It pays off. Man, I'm talking to you young people. Serving him pays off. It's nothing better. I got 15 people in the room that can testify. I thought the paycheck would do it, and it didn't. I thought if I could get in that one subdivision, I knew my credit wasn't good. I got in anyway, and I ain't happy. A manicured loan don't make me happy. A fifth bedroom hadn't made me happy. I got more bathrooms than I need, and I'm not happy. I got flat screens everywhere I turn, but I'm not happy. If you give your life to the Lord, I'm not saying it'll be easy. I'm not saying it'll be easy, but it's fulfilling. If you're ashamed to confess him at school, at work, you're going to get the same treatment one day. Can I beg you to confess him before men today? I want to give you an opportunity like I do every week. Let's go ahead and stand to give your life to the Lord. I joke around a lot. I do want to say to this particular 11 o'clock, I thank you for your patience. I preach longer, and I thank you that you stay. We want somebody to get saved, man. Do you know Jesus? Do you know Father God? Are you controlled by the Holy Spirit, the three in one? Do you believe that Jesus came from heaven to earth for our sin? Because we couldn't do it. Nobody could do it. He hung on a cross suffered, bled, and died. I say it every week. They put him in a tomb on the third day. Man, I I wish I could see it. I wish that was video footage. You get up from death (laughs) because of the power of God, and you you are God too. That's a whole nother sermon. He got up. I'm preaching today. Brielle, you're here today. You sing on the worship team because you're saved. He saved you. Don't you want to be saved today? I, I, I'm not in the begging business, but I'll beg. Don't you want to say, yeah, Lord, I, I believe you're the Savior, and I happen to need a Savior. Will you save me? The Bible says whoever calls on the name of the Lord, I love it. I know I need to stop preaching, but it says whoever. Isn't that awesome, Susan? Whoever. (laughs) Whoever. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved.
Can I invite you to come on down today? Let me pray with you so you can call on his name. Would you come? Would you come? Come on, come on. You ain't got to be scared. Give me some. What's your name? Donnie. Donnie? Cool name. Somebody else. I feel like I, I, I can't rush. Somebody else? Are you here? You know I know you. Let me have a hug. I know you. Donnie and Emily. If you don't mind, stand on this side and still hug your mama. I'm going to say it one more time. There's nothing like serving the Lord. Can I give somebody else an opportunity? You playing games, you wasting time. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. What's your name? I see, I can't see you behind the mask. What? Stoma? What a cool name. Give me five. Stoma, Stoma, Stoma. Here's what I want y'all to do. I just want y'all to pray with me. I don't ever want to, you know me, I don't want to fool you. I ain't trying to fool you. I'm not trying to play games. I'm not trying to slick you. I'm not trying to put a notch in my belt. We ain't trying to add to our numbers. I want y'all's life to change. I know what I'm talking about. He can change your life. <laughs> trying to go on. Can we just give God a little bit of praise before I pray? <laughs> <laughs> what I want y'all to do is repeat after me. It's not a magic potion, but mean it in your heart and you'll be saved. Say, Father, I come before you humble, acknowledging that I need you. I need you to be my savior. I need you to fill me. I need you to lead me. I believe, Jesus, that you died on the cross, but I believe on the third day you rose from death, proving that you're the savior. You're God. So would you save me now? Holy Spirit, would you fill me now? Would you empower me to follow you the rest of my days? And when I fall, would you help me to talk to you and ask you to forgive me? Would you help me to not try to be you, but to follow you? In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Can I get hugs from all three of y'all? All three of you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Give God a little bit more praise. Give him a little bit more praise. So I want everybody in the room, turn around and look at the clock. We are late. I want you to see that for a reason. Is it worth it? I want you to look at the clock because we got to change our priorities. This is where we need to be. I told this young man here, he's taking his baby out now. He's got his baby in the best place your baby could be. Thank you. Thank you for being that kind of daddy. Thank you. Give God some praise. Father, we love you, we thank you, we thank you. Help us to have the spirit that Daniel had that we ain't going to compromise, but we're going to make a difference in a dark world. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a good week.